well, I'm just recording. Record on the computer so I can share it afterwards. Sometimes, yeah, it's better to have a little recording. So I'd like to put it up on Instagram maybe after as well, you know, so other people can get to hear it as well. So welcome to um uh, to, to, to to be well, connect and tribe series two. We're delighted to be here this morning. Um and I for those that haven't heard of uh, what I do um or heard of um, this series that I'm actually doing currently at the moment. I share my passion for nutrition um, and holistic approach um, on this Be Well, uh, Connect and Thrive series, but not only to discuss my own passion, mm -hmm. but also um, of real food, which is my passion and uh, as a nutritionist and a coach, but to share other practices um, and other people's passions on how to thrive in the work and in daily life as well. So um, this Be Well, I suppose, Connect and Thrive series is brought to you by We Well Hive on how best to be healthy, be well and be awesome and to live a healthier life for longer. So I'm Michelle Ryan, certified nutritionist and qualified uh, coach. And my hope is to build a thriving community, sharing how by working together and with nourishing and nourishing food, uh, educating, connecting with other holistic uh, approaches and practitioners will support you to rebalance, uh, reduce stress, anxiety and thrive in your daily life. And my mission is to transform you from surviving to thriving. So on this morning on series two, we've got Anne Scannon um, and uh, we're also, of course, celebrating uh, National Workplace Wellbeing Day. So I'm delighted to be on here this morning and really to uh, give that little bit of a nugget to uh, support you in any way we can this morning. You might take away one thing that might really bring down that overwhelm, reduce that stress piece, put you on the right path, put you a healthier life. Um, and it's all about really uh, what's going to work for you. So welcome Anne to the series and we're delighted to have you on board. And um, so how are you this morning, Anne? Yeah, I'm good, Michelle, I'm good. Hello everybody. And I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me, Michelle. Uh, National Workplace Wellbeing Day. Who even knew it was a thing? Huh? I know. <laughs> so it's great, but it's great. It's great to take the opportunity to just, you know, pause for a minute, isn't it? And reflect on where we are and, you know, what's going on and how we can maybe serve ourselves a little bit better. So thanks so much for inviting me along. Absolutely. And you just mentioned there. Uh, who even really know that it was a thing, National Workplace Wellbeing Day. Um, IBEC have done, uh, um, is a, an association that works with a lot of companies in Ireland uh, with regards to the process and the procedures in companies, ensuring that employees are, you know, um, I suppose, are given the best, shall we say, care. Um, and they brought in Workplace Wellbeing Day really to ensure that the employers are supporting them. So I think that it's been there now for a number of years with IBEX, so other initiatives have actually taken it on. So um, it's just marking that space as well. And I suppose I am um, from having worked in corporate for many years and um, you're going to share your little story with us as well about uh, that process. Uh, you, you, you work as well in a corporate environment. So it's yeah. so important, isn't it? And just to really mark, um, even if it is just, as you said, one day where we actually take that time to think. Yeah. Yeah, and absolutely. And of course, it should be every day that yeah. the employers are appreciating us all and we're all realizing, you know, and, and looking after ourselves in the workplace. But, you know, one day uh, to do it officially is a good start. Um, yeah. I work for an American consultancy. And so I think that's maybe why I haven't clocked National Workplace Wellbeing Day in Ireland for the last while, because we we've celebrated what was it called? Employee Appreciation Day okay. uh, earlier in the year. So, you know, that that's quite nice that there's just a different rhythm um, in, in different countries, I suppose. Co different you know. cultures as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah and then, yeah. you know, as we're working more globally now with remote working, et cetera, and I know we'll touch on that in a while, it's nice to kind of check in with the rhythms of all of the different cultures. So I'm getting two for the price of one this year, <laughs> which is great. Absolutely. Yeah, you're coming in from two different yeah. aspects, yeah, which is great. So, Anne, it's great to have you on board. And um, as I mentioned, you're going to tell us a little, a little bit about, you know, I suppose, um, where you, where you, I suppose, journey came from. Uh, <laughs> I introduced our invited Anne on this morning because she works very much in the mindfulness space mm -hmm. and um, I know coming from the holistic approach with regards to the nutrition it isn't just about one thing it's about really working with other modalities really to bring 
down that uh, overwhelm or the, 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 the uh, that piece of the stress. Um, but it can work in many, many areas of, of our lives. Um, so, uh, Anne, would you just like to maybe introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you, um, where you kind of um, got on this path and um, and how, how, how it kind of presented itself to you? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Michelle. So yeah, so as Michelle said, Anne Scallon, um, and I have set up my own little mindfulness business called uh, Wild Atlantic Mindfulness. So you can check me out there. And yeah, where have I come from? Well, it's been a long road. I'm an accredited mindfulness teacher now, and I call myself a creativity coach as well, because I, I have a kind of a dual background. I have a, a BSc in maths and computer science, which kind of led me into the technology sphere, which I'm still operational in. And I also have a BA and an MA in uh, art and art history and theory. So ever since I was very young, I've been kind of walking the technology and creativity path. Yeah. So um, so how did I get into mindfulness? Well, it started in about 2005. I was living in London at the time. I was working as a project director for a technology company in Covent Garden. And I, I kind of say now that I was experiencing the holy trinity of 21st century living stress, depression, and anxiety. You know, they were all coming together. Um, and I wasn't in a particularly good place. So I was visiting my GP and he was helping me out. And he suggested to me that I read a book by John Kabat-Zinn called Mindful Ways Through Depression. So off I went and dutifully got the book, started working my way through it. And within a couple of chapters, I was like, oh my God, you know, where has this been all my life? Yeah. You know, I was in my mid thirties at that stage and it was, it was just incredible. Um, it kind of introduced me to the kind of principles of mindfulness, which I'd never really appreciated before. You know, I grew up in, in 1980s Ireland, you know, in the traditional uh, convent education system. There was no sense of building self-awareness particularly or developing uh, uh, any kind of really intentional relationship with your thoughts. You know, at that point, I believed everything that was going on in my head. You know, I, I thought every single thought that I had was the truth, you know. And so so that was it. That yeah. was my real huge aha moment, you know, that these things going through my mind are just mental events. Mm -hmm. You know, and I have a choice about my relationship to them. So so that was it. I was you know, I was blown away. I realized I was a really um, my pattern at that point was really ruminatory thinker. You know, I went over and over things in my mind. I replayed things. I listened to the storyline. I believed the storyline, you know, and I never really stepped outside it and just gave myself that space. So <clears throat> in the book, John Kabat-Zinn, so John Kabat-Zinn, just a little bit of a, about him, he is called the father of mindfulness in the West. Um, you may have heard of the eight week mindfulness for stress courses or yeah. MBSR courses. Yeah. So he would have developed those over okay. in Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And that's kind of where that came from. Okay. Very much influenced by um, Eastern philosophies and traditions, you know, meditation, Asian. Buddhism. But he moved it into a secular space. Okay. So, you know, and that's why it's... Um, it's so important to recognize that while mindfulness has a very ancient history, you know, you don't have to adhere to any particular philosophy or religion to practice it. Yeah. So he suggested that you need to find um, or you should develop a, a meditation practice. So mindfulness isn't all about meditation. No. The reason that a lot of mindfulness practitioners practice meditation is because it helps you develop the skills of self-awareness okay. and helps you increase your attention and your concentration. Yeah. So I went looking around in Brixton in London for a meditation group. And uh, the only meditation group that was available to me was, was a Buddhist meditation group. And, you know, I, I'd grown up in Ireland. I'd never met a Buddhist. Yes. Like, oh, wow. OK, uh, I suppose I'm just going to have to try this. And I was, a bit, you know, a bit nervous about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I went off and uh, met this group, um, the Brixton Buddhists. And I have to say it was just fantastic. You know, I was made to feel so welcome. And I went on to meditate with that group for the next eight years, twice. Wow. A week. So, yeah, it was, yeah. it was that important to me. So um, then rolled forward a couple of years and I moved back to Ireland in 2011. And, you know, I had just noticed how what a massive impact mindfulness had had on my life, um, both personally, obviously, to start with, um, then with my family, because the ripples, that's the beautiful thing, the ripples move out, you know, and they kind of, it kind of touches everywhere, mm. every aspect of your life. Yeah. So personally, my family, and then in work. 
Um, so I moved back to Ireland in 2011 and started working remotely back then for this American consultancy that I currently work for. So in the technology space, we, um, we basically were, were a consultancy for digital accessibility. So making sure that digital properties are accessible to people with disabilities. Okay. So, yeah, so I work for them. Um, we're a remote first company, so everybody's remote. Okay. I think there's a, there's a small um, office in Florida. But and now we've we've merged so there, we have some offices in Amsterdam and various different places. Okay. Right now, but we're truly global and very remote. And uh, so my role there now, I was a senior project manager for many years and now I'm working as a solutions architect. So, okay. you know, working with lots of the top names in industry to to envisage envisage um, solutions to their technological accessibility <laughs> issues. Yeah. So so that's me that's in a nutshell. So it's, you've had um, uh, definitely a journey with regards to living in the London space, uh, culture, that fast paced lifestyle. And then, um, which has been amazing. And I've, because I've lived in London myself, yeah. I, only, I only know <laughs> the, uh, the similarities with regards to the whole fast paced life, you yeah. know, and trying to come down off that can be quite hard, you know, yeah. in, in trying to bring that balance and try to bring that grounding. <laughs> so the Buddhism sounded amazing. I, I, I really like that piece of that touch really, because um, yeah, it, it's great when we get that one thing that's going to fit. Yeah. And it's like a key, Anne, isn't it? It's nearly like a key that someone is unlocking and you think, oh my God, it's a whole other room that I can actually, you know, go into. Yeah. And it's my space because it's up here in our mind that little space is, you know, which is fantastic. So absolutely. So I'm sure challenges presented along the way. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I suppose as my mindfulness practice was growing, um, it helped me to deal with those challenges okay. in a different way. You know, instead of the old me, the ruminatory me, who's obviously still in here and still a facet yeah. of me, would have been, you know, if anything uh, out of the ordinary happened, oh, why me? You know, why has this happened to me? Whereas now I'm able to, to kind of take a step back and and create some space around anything that happens so i think it really helps you to build resilience you know and ability to just you know as john kabat said, said is a bit of a cliche but you know you can't stop the waves but you can learn to surf absolutely you know? and so absolutely. that's quite appropriate for living in west cork now so, yeah, yeah, yeah so then after i moved back you know mindfulness had had such a major impact on me that i decided to train as a mindfulness teacher so i'm now a fully accredited mindfulness teacher and just love you know sharing sharing uh, what i know yeah 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 which is always so nice because to see other people kind of blossom around you as well isn't it it, it absolutely makes that journey so much more enjoyable I think as well isn't it when you have other people that yeah. go through that that space so you've worked in the corporate you've worked you're working at home and you work in you know in remote working so that presents its own challenges and you know when it comes to we'll be doing a little bit of a mindfulness practice with Anne in a minute she's going to share um a, a little piece with us um but <laughs> before that with regards to kind of working in the corporate home and the remote working and family life as well how does that um how do you work with regards to you know bringing in your mindfulness practice is it every day or you know is it twice a week or how does that kind of present itself okay yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, for me now, it would be every day. Um, okay. So I don't necessarily do a formal meditation every day. I would do that, you know, when I can and a couple of times a week at least. But I practice a lot of my, what I call mindfulness in daily life, you know. So it's and that has come through, you know, just making it a part of my life. Okay. So things like in the morning, a mindful cup of tea. And these are things that that anybody can bring in you know a mindful yeah. cup of tea so just you know holding the cup noticing the cup before noticing everything about it before you even put it to your lips you know noticing the smell of the tea noticing the anticipation uh about drinking the tea you know and just giving yourself that time out so that you know we've all ended up with an empty cup on the desk and we don't even remember drinking it you know yes. so while you might not approach every cup of tea in your day that way just giving yourself space for one is really is really lovely way to integrate mindfulness in your life. The other things are, of course, you know, taking breaks, taking regular breaks, getting up from your desk. Um, you know, if uh, mindful movement is one of the things that I would teach because for okay. some people they don't uh, they don't enjoy uh, seated meditation. Yeah. So you can get up and just do some, do your stretches, but do them in a really mindful fashion. So rather than doing your stretches and thinking, oh, I have to get through this now because I have to get back yeah. to the desk. 
you know, really feeling every element of your body moving. And it can just take three minutes, Michelle, you know, but just even, you know, even your wrist, just moving your wrist and just noticing, oh, okay, what's the weight in my wrist like? What's the sense in my fingers, you know? And that just brings you back from wherever you've gone to in your head. You yeah. know, and that that's really what mindfulness is all about. It's about noticing when you've gone off in your head somewhere and yeah. bringing yourself back. You yeah, know? to ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. one one of the things I suppose those senses are senses, aren't they? Our smell, our touch, yeah. our taste, our hearing, our sight, our sound are so important to our innate, Absolutely. you know, human being. And that awareness that you're mentioning there when it comes through in the mindfulness is absolutely key for our grounding so yeah. bringing those two pieces together don't just come uh, in nutrition and tasting of the food when we see it when we do it through the mindfulness practice of that cup of tea it's yeah. nearly like um you're, you're drinking that uh, that awareness into your Absolutely. body you're yeah. seeing it as you said before you actually even you know yeah. do it you know so it's really calming the mind down because stress yeah. has a huge impact when it comes to our hormonal health yeah. And just coming from, I suppose, the nutrition piece and the, and the area that I come from, we have many hormones in our body. And as we get older, our cycles really start changing in our life and our cycles really impact how we work in our day, how we are in our day, how we react or, you know, or, um, in our day. So those cycles um, in our hormones are very much about um, the hormones in our head which are increases our serotonin, our dopamine, our hormones in our thyroid, our hormones in our liver, which is our insulin, our hormones, of course, in our cortisol, which is our stress hormone. And using that stress piece produces that extra cortisol when we do get stressed. So all yeah. the more important to stop it, to yeah. stop it. So you're not actually uh, just doing one thing, you're doing many things by doing yeah. that mindfulness practice. Yes, you're not just absolutely. stopping that you know awareness but you're also in your body stopping a, a, a craving stopping um you know um it could be you know the blood pressure it could be court you know the cholesterol levels you know these yeah. all have an impact in the background so that domino effect that you mentioned and is absolutely you know essential yeah yeah that's right michelle and in mindfulness um we talk about the green the red and the blue zone you know okay. and they're linked to those hormone surges that you talk about um the blue would be the the really achieving the really okay. you know um and getting all of those reward hormones the red would be the threat hormone you know the, okay. the cortisol the threat yeah. space the fight or flight and then the green is is the rest space you know, okay. and so while it's not helpful to be in the green all the time because you have to achieve things in your life, yeah, it's about the balance, isn't it? It's about yeah. bringing the balance in. We don't have to worry about the red zone because if we're under threat, we will. You know, we have many, you know, millennia of evolutionary practice behind us <laughs> to to keep us ready to fight or flight. But the blue and the green we can work on. You know, so yeah. um, so yeah. yeah, so that's that's a really good point, Michelle. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. it re if, again, it's another support mechanism, isn't it? Not just for being with a cup of tea, but then all that goes on in the background that exactly. we might that we not, might not even be aware of, you know. Absolutely. So, and that's about knowledge. It's about the nurturing, and it's about the education, really, to bring us into that space and be understanding of how that is formed. So, I think that's brilliant, actually. So, those mindfulness weapons, as as you you mentioned, um, are absolutely key. So, you mentioned the, the the tea and the breaks during the day and the movement of the stretching. Um, is there um, you know, maybe a practice that you could maybe share with us, um, and you know, uh, you know, if you wanted to to maybe kick off there now and yeah, take the time yeah. and just take a breath, um, you know, tell us how we can, you know, be involved. Yeah, absolutely. So what I'm going to do, Michelle, is I'm going to lead a short um, mindfulness of breathing practice because I think Excellent. that you know the breath is integral to a lot of this. Um, and the other, like one of the other things that I would practice a lot during the day is just connecting with my breath. You know, say I've got a big meeting coming up with some major okay. stakeholders. I'm going to take a little 
I'll just connect with my breath and I'll share a technique. Um, I'll do a, a kind of a longer little session first, a, a mindfulness of breathing practice, just so that people can get an, an understanding of it. And then later I'll share another tiny little super secret weapon that I that I practice a lot myself in in the workspace, you know, Great. or Looking anywhere. Yeah. 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 So, OK, so we'll do about I don't know, we'll do about what we do It's 20 past 10. We'll do about nine minutes of right. a mindfulness practice yeah yeah so mindfulness of breathing so this would be one of the techniques that i am um, one of the central kind of pillars of my mindfulness practice and what i teach other people and it's because really the reason for this is because the breath is always with us you know so we don't have to carry anything with us we don't have to remember anything it's here yeah. it's always yeah. here right so if you just want to settle yourself and yeah, so just making sure that you're comfortable in your chair, that you're kind of, I always say upright, but not uptight, you know, so just <laughs> nice and relaxed, but, but alert. Um, if you want to pop a cushion behind your back or whatever, you know, put your hands in your lap. If you're doing a longer practice, I would always say put your hands on a cushion because you can get some tension in your shoulders. So that alleviates the tension in the shoulders. So yeah, so just, just settle, you know, we're only here for a couple of minutes, so we don't have mm. to do preparation. So just taking a breath and you know, oh, okay, there's been a lot of chatter. Now we're mm. in this quiet space, right? So we just accept that. And closing your eyes if that feels comfortable. But otherwise you can just, you know, lower your gaze, whatever is comfortable for you. And uh, yeah, and just, just noticing where you are and congratulating yourself for arriving here and for giving yourself this time. Noticing the feet on the floor, the bum in the chair, you know, the hands in the lap. So noticing the body, quick scan, hello body. And then connecting in with the breath. Just not trying to change it at all. Just noticing how it is. So we're breath in, and breathing in, breath out. And breathing out. Noticing where in the body you particularly feel your breath. It could be different every time you check, but maybe in this practice you're feeling it mostly in your nostrils. Or it could be in your chest, you're noticing an expansion in your chest on the in-breath and a contraction on the out-breath. Or maybe you notice it most in your belly and a gentle swelling in the in-breath and a softening on the out-breath. Just paying attention to wherever it is you notice your breath in this moment. You can tune into the kind of wave-like nature of the breath. So much of nature comes in waves. And we're no different. Just noticing that movement, that rippling of the breath. And if you notice that your attention has wandered off, as attention does, just noticing that and inviting it kindly back to the breath. We're thinking of the breath as kind of an anchor here, a thread running through the whole body. And as the mind wanders, we just invite it back. No judgment, no criticism. Noticing that the mind has wandered is a beautiful moment of mindfulness. And coming back, a bit like training a puppy. Wanders off, we bring it back. Wanders off again. And bring it back again. Mm -hmm. 
and some people find it helpful to count the breaths in order to keep their attention there. So on an in-breath, just counting one. And on the out-breath, repeating one. Next in-breath, two. Next out-breath, two. And all the way up to ten. When you get to 10, just starting again at one. And if you don't make it to 10 because the attention wandered off, just acknowledging that and starting again at one anyway. Where are you now? Just noticing if the mind has wandered and inviting it back again and again. Or you might find it helpful to imagine the breath as a kind of a golden light flowing into the body through the nose, the mouth, the throat, down into the chest, the belly, and then flowing throughout the limbs, down to the toes, the hands, touching every single cell of your body. And breathing in, it's full of nourishment. It's bringing in what the body needs. And on the out breath, it's releasing what the body doesn't need. Golden light nourishment touching every single cell of the body. And then releasing what we don't need. So every single breath is like a tiny moment of self care without even trying. I'll just read a little passage that Thich Nhat Hanh says about the breath. It says, our breath is the bridge from our body to our mind, the element which reconciles our body and mind and which makes possible oneness of body and mind. Breath is aligned to both body and mind and it alone is the tool which can bring them both together, illuminating both and bringing peace and calm. Our breath is illuminating the body. That lovely golden glow permeating every cell. And again, if the mind has wandered, just gently invite it back to the breath this anchor that's always with you. Now letting go of all effort and just noticing your body here in the chair, noticing the feet on the floor, the chair supporting your back, hands in your lap, giving your toes and your fingers a little wiggle, and just have a little stretch when you're ready, just opening your eyes. Hmm. Sorry, that was you great. anything there, Michelle? Yeah, it was just nice to take that, as you said, we've been chatting, so it was nice just to take that time, and it did take me a little while to come down yeah. from the chatter, but then the breath was, <laughs> The, the idea of vitamin D was just very much being, you know, into the into my mind and my awareness of getting out into 
the fresh air today and mm-hmm. and, and soaking that up um, mm-hmm. for that extra little bit of nourishment. So um, and really firmly on the ground were my feet. So it's great, absolutely great. Um, and I hope those that are listening as well have actually taken that time to really, you know, feel the benefits of what mindfulness can actually do with regards to grounding us and breathing in that nourishment of breath. Absolutely, absolutely. And then the the kind of secret weapon technique that I wanted Mm. to share with you is a kind of a very shortened version of that. And you can do it in as as few as three breaths. Okay. So I would often use it, Michelle, um, before a big meeting or if I have to make a presentation or just if things are going a bit awry, you know, or you can use it in a doctor's waiting room. You can use it in the queue at the supermarket. It's super discreet. Nobody needs to know that you're doing it, you know. So the, I, I love um, visual metaphors because I'm quite a visual person. So it really helps me remember things. Okay. So for this one, think of an hourglass. So it's wide at the top, yeah. goes into a very narrow waist and then out again, right? So first of all, you're noticing what's going on. So you're at the wide space at the top. You're noticing yeah. everything that's going on around you. You know, if you're in the doctor's surgery, you know, are there other people there? you know, noises and also what's going on in your head. You know, are there worries coming through? Are there thoughts? Are there apprehensions? So you're just paying attention to everything as it is. You're not trying to change it. Right. So that's the wide awareness. Then we narrow it in. So you take a breath there or a number of breaths there, however much you have time for. And then you narrow it in and just focus on the breath. Okay. Okay, So you're letting go everything else. You're just coming into the breath. And it could be, you know, like I I introduced a couple of techniques there in that in that practice. You could focus on where you feel the breath in your body. So the nose, the chest, the belly, wherever it is. So that's useful for some people. Or you can just count the breath one in, one out. Or, you know, you can imagine that golden thread. You know, thread, that, yes. Yeah, that yeah. coming in, the nourishment. So that's narrow. Just really try and bring your focus into the breath, even just for one breath. And then you broaden out again, your body in the space, your feet okay. on the ground. You know, and that can, it's amazing. That can really ground you so quickly. So that would be something that I would recommend to everybody to have a little practice with. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and such a simple tool to have in your back pocket for those moments, you know? So what, one of the things that that, that came up actually on my uh, membership this morning, um, I do a check-in on a Friday. So procrastination was um, one of the words that came up in the group, you know? Um, And again, how would something like that present itself and how can we overcome? Because it's, it's, it's probably one of the words that I think for all of us, we procrastinate. You know, yeah. in, in doing certain tasks um and it can be again you know around our health as well and procrastinating you know, how do i take the step oh i just put it off till next week you know i'll do it tomorrow and not tomorrow never comes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 okay and um, that's a great question <clears throat> i suppose what i would say about that is with mindfulness you know i don't know if i've showed you the fist before so the really tight fist right that's another mm. great visual metaphor and the tight fist signifies kind of whatever it is we're resisting okay. right um so as we resist things persist so that which resists persists, persists. Okay. so you know Very procrastination good. often is about resistance isn't it yeah it's about you know resisting the fact that you know this we do need to do this thing because we probably don't really want to do it yeah you know? um so and what i always say it's um it, i use it as an exercise with people just to introduce mindfulness in a, in a couple of minutes if you breathe into that fist so if you accept okay. what's going on you None. accept what it is that you you know it's whatever is in your life that you're not you don't you really rather wasn't there so the job yeah. that you'd really rather not do yeah? <laughs> yeah so that's the fist you breathe into it you accept that it's here you bring your attention to it mm-hmm. you'll notice that it starts to kind of unfurl it starts yeah. to loosen it starts to ease so the same for things that we uh, are procrastinating we're basically yeah. resisting them so you know just notice that don't beat yourself up about it a lot of people yeah. beat themselves up a lot about procrastination it's human yeah. nature you know Absolutely. notice this is what's going on i'm a human loads of humans do this common humanity you know and now yeah. i'm going to breathe into it i'm going to bring my attention to it i'm going to you know see if i can just play with that sense of resistance bring in yeah. the mindfulness bring in the breath see if it will ease and as it eases and we stop resisting you'll probably get the thing done 
you know, yeah. or else yeah. you'll acknowledge that it's not actually important and I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and again, because I do a lot around planning of meals and, you know, ensuring that that's always um, part of the process every week, you know, getting those meals yeah. planned and ensuring that the shopping trolley and the meal plan is done at the start of the week. Um, and then it's the follow on then after that. So sometimes yeah. we procrastinate even about doing the meal plan or, you know, um, and, and again, it's, it, it, it's very key. What you said there is that, that persistence sometimes is the one that's kind of stopping us. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas if it's visible, I think it presents itself with, you know, I, I, I can I can do this. And, and the breath then is, is simply then just transforming it. Yeah, I think, except, you know, accepting and acknowledging this is where I am. Being yeah kind to yourself and yeah then breathing into it, into it and you know and that's it and that's it and again that's great because all these kind of t- hints and tips are great takeaways for for people to you know have in their back pocket and aren't they do you know what I mean yeah. so 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 what's next for you and what what's um you know you've you've done the mindfulness teaching you've you're still working in the corporate world um you know how does that present itself then going forward for you where where are you right now yeah yeah great thanks michelle um so where am i right now well for national employee appreciation day <laughs> in the states i uh, i led a mindfulness big mindfulness practice for our entire organization so that was okay, really exciting wow. and i enjoyed that i love bringing mindfulness into the workplace you know because i spend a lot of my time there and so do so many of us so i've yeah. started that at work and you know just trying to raise awareness about mindfulness and and act as a mentor to people and, you know, run, run little practice sessions. Um, so I'm hoping to get a, a really regular program of that going off the ground at work. Okay. And then personally, I'm with Wild Atlantic Mindfulness. I'm running um, Wednesday evening sessions. So if anybody's interested, just let me know and you can Great. come along and have a taster. Yeah. Uh, so Wednesday evening sessions, I'm also getting involved in some retreats that Namaste are organizing. So hiking, yoga, mindfulness. So we did one in Bantry last week and it was just beautiful because I realized it was my first time teaching in person since before COVID. And it was just so special. I mean, online is brilliant because it gives us access to so much, but there's something really special about in person as well. So that was lovely. And I've been invited to give a talk up at uh, Women in Project Management Conference in Dublin Great. on mindful leadership in May as well. So there's lots going on. And then I'm hoping during the summer to stand up a couple of um, mindfulness and creativity workshops okay, uh, great. in person in West Cork. So, Brilliant. Yeah, so so that's going on at the moment. And, you know, and it's just bringing that balance into everything, isn't it? it you is. know? And if I realize that I'm taking on too much, which I sometimes do, you know, just just noticing that too, being kind to myself, weighing things up, maybe letting some stuff go, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's lots and, on the horizon. That's, which is great, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it, and I think when we set our intention, um, the energy follows. I always believe with regards to that, you know, that Deepak Chopra would be a big follower of, you know, intention and yeah. setting the intention and then the energy follows, which is absolutely great. So again, having those uh, intentions out there with regards to, you know, kind of breath work and, you know, those sessions that are coming up for you and that energy then, of course, if it's something you love and you're passionate about, you know, that energy will follow as yeah. well. Do you know what I mean? Which yeah. is absolutely super. So the, the the tips and takeaways, and do you want to just remind people with regards to how they can bring mindfulness into their daily lives? Um, just a yeah. couple of takeaways really for today. Um, and uh, uh, just as part, again, of National uh, Workplace Wellbeing Day, uh, is a great way just to to ground people just even for a few moments um, and having their back pockets to kind of take away with for, for the rest of the weekend or for the month yeah. of May. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Michelle, you mentioned intentionality and that yeah. was part of the definition of mindfulness that I okay. hold most dear, which is paying attention on purpose to the present moment without judgment. You know, okay. so if you can just remember those, you know, it's it's paying attention intentionally. So choosing to pay attention. So that's the big thing. You know, every we've all got personal choice. Yes. So we can be running around like, you know, like flies, you know, and, and yeah. just super busy. And or we can and we can still do that. We can still be busy and deal with all the things we have to do. But taking intentionally bringing our attention to the present moment a couple of times a day is really, really important. So mm. bringing you back to yourself, 
right? So you can do that through the cup of tea we mentioned. Uh, you can do it through the hourglass. The, okay. That's called the three-stage breathing space. Mm. You know, you can do it through that. You can do it through just the breath. You know, just you're sitting at your desk. There's a meeting coming up. You need you need realize you've gotten overwhelmed or stressed or anxious. Come back to your breath. Just come back yeah. to your breath. A couple of breaths. That's all it takes or stand up from the desk and do some shoulder rolls, but in a really mindful, intentional way. You know, I, my shoulders are moving. I'm noticing, you know, this, that, or the other, you know, so those kind of things and just take a break. Even, I love that thing of the breath, you know, knowing that every single moment that you breathe is a moment of self-care and your body is doing it automatically, you know? So just having a little bit of gratitude for that, noticing it, you know, because a lot of people think self-care has to be going off to the spa or doing this or doing that. It can be so tiny. Mm. And as long as we do it really, really regularly, it can have a massive impact. Mm. Yeah, so mm. those would be my couple of takeaways. So they're great. I mean, even the tea, um, because we do take that break every day, the 11 yeah. o'clock break, you know, even that tea in, at that time is absolutely key. Um, the hourglass in the shopping, um, yeah. being out and about, I, I, I love that. And that self-care breath is yeah. absolutely essential. And that movement practice, because we do, uh, need to move and it's so important that we do move every 30 40 minutes yeah. with regards to even the flow of our blood in our body and really getting the um the movement going so if we could do it with a graceful mindfulness i love mindfulness because it's so graceful in its own practice um uh, it's classic really is a yeah. classic actually no wonder it's around for so so many years exactly. and isn't it you know it's just yeah. not going yeah. to go yeah. away is it you know it's it's here for for the long term really um, absolutely yeah and such a buzzword now but you know yeah you think it's been here for three yeah. centuries and longer you know so yeah yeah yeah, it, yeah. there's a reason for that there absolutely is and uh, we're living and breathing in it which is great yeah. um and i do hope that people that have joined us this morning are also going to touch on it um and you know jump on to Anne's page uh, her website and um you're going to be putting up um uh, comment where people can also subscribe to and yeah. page um afterwards she's going to put it up once i i you know this goes up onto facebook um yeah again. i'll put up a link um i have an e e Great. email mailing list and i you know i promise not to spam but i do send yeah. out recordings and guided meditations and tips every now and then brilliant so brilliant and, join, that'd be lovely and that's oh. absolutely great and again it's always good to share um, other practices because as I mentioned at the start it's never about one thing um, it, it's, it's always a, a number of different things but if we can have one thing that's going to kick us off or start us off then other areas will start to follow so maybe the nutrition piece might be an area uh, then that might also be worked on which again breathing into our procrastination about our health might be something that you know might look at with regards to maybe balancing blood sugar maybe you know weight loss menopause those areas also have a huge impact with regards to having those knock-on effects in our life and in our overall health and it's all about again going back to my mission it's about transforming from surviving to thriving and again really when we transform um i um dip and swim every morning and do a run to come from the surviving to thriving and Anne does her practice every day with regards to come from surviving to thriving it really supports us in our day in how we move through our day um, and I would love uh, again for everyone that maybe listened today or who will, will be listening to touch on some of the points that we worked on today and maybe you too can go from surviving to thriving so Anne thank you so much for sharing what you shared today because it's been absolutely super. I've loved having you on. Um, is there anything that you'd like to share, maybe last moment, last word, uh, before we say goodbye to everybody? Um, Thanks for having me, Michelle. And just remember to breathe. Excellent, excellent. And uh, very apt as well. So um, thank you so much for listening, watching. Um, and again, thank you to Anne Scanlon, who mindfulness teacher who came on uh, very kindly this morning uh, to mark National Workplace Wellbeing Day. And um, me, myself, um, Michelle Ryan, a nutritional therapist. Thank you uh, from me. And we're very grateful um, to be here and in gratitude, uh, Michelle and Anne. So thank you. And we will hopefully see you again on the next series three. Take care. Bye-bye.